Hey everybody, welcome back. If you know the line plays the Binding of Isaac Atterberg Plus, we got a good little run of momentum going on, despite our runs not being that amazing. Hopefully we can change that. Uh, maybe. Speed's okay, above average maybe. Rate of fire is good. Damage is above average. Luck is bad, but who cares? It's really uh, all about our HP. We start with Black Powder and Kamikaze. K-H-X-H-7-7. So, with 1.04 speed, Black Powder is more or less useless right now, but may well become a critical item in the late game if we don't get any other means of doing consistently good damage. We can also do little things like this. You know, get enemies killed relatively easily as a result. But again, it all comes down to, we, we got Curse of the, uh, Curse of the Unknown right here. So we have no idea what our HP looks like. We could well, unfortunately, be on one Spirit Heart. And if that's the case, then I will die when I press the space bar. One thing we could do... Well... Okay, I'm gonna try this now that we have the advantage here. That turned out terribly. We may now be on a half of a spirit heart, but as long as we live through this floor, and preferably we get like, you know, maybe to open those stone chests that are a little deeper down there, I'm gonna be a relatively happy camper, I think, so try something like this, see if we get a black market or a crawl space, and then this is the real money maker right here, we're hoping. Ivy bag, well, um, you know, I do have some comeuppance. We had that run we died on like a week ago or a week and a half ago where I should have, I had Ipecac and like Monstro's Lung or Tractor Beam like it was a nightmare uh, and I ignored Host Hat in Boss Rush. I didn't even notice it until the episode went up. Oh good, milk. So I do kind of feel a desire, nay a compulsion if possible, to make an explosion immunity run work. It's kind of like IV bag is also a really good item, but if we can get Kamikaze to work for us, it's it's unusual, relatively, and pretty fun. Whereas IV bag is like, you know, it works. We probably take it on like, you know, one in twenty runs or something like that, or one in ten, to make it worthwhile. Any Samson run, any run with bloody lust, any run in which using our uh, taking damage gives us some kind of benefit, it's always going to be a candidate. Using it to get a little bit of extra money or get into a curse room without taking spirit heart damage, you get the idea. Like, it's used all the time. So let's just leave it. We can always get it later, to be honest. I believe so, at least. We still don't know what our HP is like. And this one's bumming... Wow. This one's bumming me out. First off, our deal with the devil just got ruined, so obviously we have some variety of red heart here. Um bothers me because I have no idea where we stand on an HP standpoint so it's like this should be illegal really two curse of the unknown in consecutive order to start a run there's a little bit of a gamble there so we have to have at least one full red heart ah, that's not true I guess because if we didn't have any spirit hearts we would still have to yeah okay I think well, I'm going to rethink this for a second here. Because I kind of want to use Kamikaze to get that, but okay, okay, okay. It's extremely great. Even with the reduction. I'm going to give it a shot. Let's go. I, I actually thought I saw my character model fall over there, and I was like... <laughs> I, got, I get a little incensed just for a second there. Not mad. Just a little self-righteous. Really? You would do that to me? Your staunchest defender, except when it comes to the retrovision pill? All right, so we're starting to build something half decent here. Even better than half decent. We, we're due for an out of control strong run. And I don't say that very often. Because I like to, you know, act like you've been there before. Head of the Keeper, also good financially here. But, uh, we've had a lot of wonky starts lately. By the way, what's going on with those, uh, spike turrets? They're moving around in weird ways. Are they under the influence? It's a very confusing setup, to be honest with you. They're all doing weird stuff. Starting the run all wonky. I'm trying to think of the British word for it. Wibbly wobbly? Piggly wiggly? No, that's a deli. Shoot, shoot, shoot! <laughs> Jerk! 
You actual Amos. Okay. Yeah, we didn't deserve a deal with the devil, but that's okay. We got extra damage. Mostly the HP is what I'm excited about, and not getting a Curse of the Unknown. Hey! So it turns out our HP wasn't that bad to begin with. Alright. So this is a very unusual sort of setup already. The kind of setup where we didn't get a deal with the devil, but we're kind of like, eh, it's okay. I'm a little cheesed because I feel like weird spike behavior is what led to me getting hit. I mean, in the end, I kind of did walk into the spike, but you know. I wanted to talk about something from the last episode that I, I, I brought it up in the middle of a tangent and was like, that, that's meat for a future episode and didn't touch on it again. If you had... This is how you know the run's starting to get a little strong here. <laughs> God. If, uh, if you had God... When I'm on my way to see you. Remember that song? Uh, okay, I'm getting a little sidetracked, but uh, if Elon Musk called you up and was like, Hey, Jeremy, congratulations. I want you to go live on Mars. Would you do it? The reason I ask is because my answer is on the tip of my tongue, and I say it, three, two, I say it at the same time. Three, two, one, let's go. Hell no. Absolutely not. Never. Um, but I... And I'm not sure if it's the demographic, you know, because the Twitch audience, the YouTube audience, at least for me, is predominantly younger people, you know, a higher chance, eh, not always, they're aging up, I gotta admit, because, you know, that's what happens as time goes on, and it's not like too many, like, you know, 11-year-olds are getting into the Binding of Isaac these days, so kind of like, you know, I've got what I got, and they're, they're sticking around for the mid-haul, which is nice, but the thing is tend to be a little bit, maybe, on the younger side. Younger people less likely to have, you know, a spouse or a life partner, children, you know, permanent responsibilities on planet Earth. And I know it sounds dismissive, but, you know, I, I really, I, I feel like when I was 20, if they were like, hey, we want you to move to Mars, I'd be like, that's a recipe for a spectacular life. I'll consider it, but probably still say no, but much more likely. And now I'm like, absolutely not. First off, you would never take me. <laughs> At least not, I gotta go through like basic training or something first. You would never take me. Got no discernible colonization skills. So keep the morale up. But dude, I, whenever I hear people... I, I really, like the time that I judge people the most is when they say that they want to live on Mars. And I'm gonna give an example here. And I want... To preface this example by saying that I love my New Yorker son, Robert, a.k.a. Alpaca Patrol. But I believe that I've heard him espouse the idea that he could live, or he, not he would live, but he, he would consider perhaps living on Mars if given the opportunity. And uh, I want to point out a couple things. One is, I played GeoGuessr with the dude, and whenever a place that's not in coastal America pops up, you know, like one of the states that borders an ocean he goes this is like my idea of the worst place to live on planet earth and you're like that's atlanta <laughs> that's not that bad dude but he's got it he he loves new york city and i got nothing against that of course oh, i got nothing against that of course but you know we'll we'll go on like 45 minute long arguments about bad pizza and i'm like what kind of pizza do you think you're gonna get on mars my dude the world's worst pizza. I'm... I think I'm, like, innately skeptical. And I know that's gonna ruin our deal with the devil chance there, but I thought it might be worth it for whatever we get. Um, I'm innately kind of skeptical, and I think you should be too, of somebody who says they want to live on Mars. What are they leaving behind on Earth that they want to get away from so eagerly? I lived in a foreign country for a year. So I want to point out, a, not a particularly long time, because if you go to Mars, you're going for friggin' life, okay? I lived in a foreign country for a year. Not a long time. South Korea is also, like, extremely developed, and despite the fact that they speak a different language, uh, as a primary language, it's very easy to survive there, you know? Like, unless you're allergic to everything. <laughs> <laughs> that you could possibly eat. Very easy to survive there. People were very welcoming. The environment, oh, it's a little human today. Okay, sure. It's not inhospitable, though. 
And even still, by the end of my year, I was like, I gotta get the heck out of this country. First off, I wanna eat some warm potatoes. Don't get me wrong. When the side dishes come out, I'm all about the soy sauce cold potato. I try to grab it before anybody else does because I'm selfish. That and the kimchi. You know, there's... I think it's how I met your mother invented the idea that, like, you know, in a couple, you know you got it good when one of you likes pickles and one of you likes olives and the other one doesn't like either. That's the setup Caden and I have got going on. I'm the pickle and olive guy and she always passes them over and I'm like, this is a dream come true. Except for my low density lipid cholesterol. But anyway, the same thing applies with Korean side dishes. Anytime you eat a Korean meal, you get a little kimchi and then you get like two to six other side dishes. Anything spicy flows to me. Anything with beans in it flows to her. It's a great setup. It's a great division of, uh, of the banchan. But this is a different bit for a different audience, so I digress. By the end of my time in Korea, I was like, I miss good bread and not feeling anxious anytime I went to the convenience store because I don't know if the person at the desk in the convenience store responds to me with anything other than like the seven Korean phrases they're known to use I'm just gonna look like an idiot you know I guess Mars probably won't have the same pr did we go to our item room on this floor did we get mom's trash I don't remember um I was like I gotta come home you know I this is not an environment for me to... Well, let me put it this way. If I'm going to spend the rest of my life in my environment, I need to change my life. You know, I need to actually make a concerted effort to integrate, learn the language, etc., etc. And I was like, I'm 20. I'm not going to do that. Are you crazy? Book of Secrets. Useless right now. Book of Belial, good, but I don't know. I guess I'm going to take it over Kamikaze just because... The odds of us getting explosive immunity go lower and lower as time goes on. Um... I can't imagine. This is more of an indictment of me than it is an indictment of anybody that wants to go live on Mars, I guess, but... Caves 2, let's give it a shot. Wow, amazing. 15 cents for a range upgrade and two spirit hearts. Actually not that bad when you put it in that context. We just overpaid for two spirit hearts. Could be a lot worse. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, maybe that's, that's a me thing. I don't want to go live on Mars, because I know, like... Probably for like the first month on Mars. The first month on Mars. I'd be like, this is sick. Did we get the internet here? I got a tweet. I'm on Mars. How's life on Earth? <laughs> I'm in space. Suck it. Elon chose me. But then, you know, after like three months, I'd be like, hey, you guys remember lettuce? That was pretty sick, huh? I don't even like lettuce that much, but that's what it does to you, I think, of being isolated from it for so long. That's why I like, I think, it's, it's like, and I've made this joke about being like a president or prime minister before. If anybody ever expresses an interest in moving to Mars, they should be immediately disqualified. Because they screwed up somehow in life on Earth, the easiest planet for human beings to survive. And I'm not saying life on Earth is always easy, obviously that's false. But there's no way life on Mars is going to be easier. Simpler, maybe. Easier? I don't know about that. You know, you got to... On Mars, you don't have to worry about free will so much. I'm pretty sure it's like, well, if you don't go out and change the oxygen scrubbers, we're going to be killed. So I'm going to really need you to do that task uh, an hour each day. Otherwise, our colony is going to fall apart. Um, this is okay. We'll take the compass. Why not? Let's go back down this way. This run is not as strong as I thought it would end up being, by the way, but it's still very good. And this is a floor that could change it all. It's 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 a positive run. Okay, let's not get negative about it. So, of course, the troubling implication is that, yes, I am saying Elon and SpaceX, when you need Mars colonists, first off, don't send yourself. I'm not trying to contribute to the god worship of... Uh, Elon Musk to any extent. I think both the the worship of Elon and the backlash against Elon are both a little misguided, but you know, it's just one man's opinion. I think he, he can do more good work on Earth, probably, with a like a gigabit fiber internet connection versus having to 
send his tweets about selling flamethrowers over a satellite connection might take like a minute and a half for them to show up in my feed. Anyway, the point- why are you selling flamethrowers again at this- okay, I'm not gonna get into it. Really though? Anyway, the point is, I'm saying Elon, nobody's gonna like this and it's not gonna help your popu popularity that much, but uh, I think you do have to screen candidates via like machine learning and then just abduct them and put them on a rocket. I'm sorry, okay? I don't make the rules, I'm just saying it's what's best for humanity. Because I'm pretty sure the people who would do them best on Mars are already killing it on Earth. And if you're killing it on Earth, you're like, I don't want to go to Mars. <laughs> I'm crushing it down here where I can just go outside anywhere and basically breathe. Are you crazy? You want me to go live in a in a dome where a single crack in the structural integrity could kill us all? Absolutely not. I got tenure, you know? So as much as it would be nice to rely on somebody's noble sacrifice, you're probably gonna have to kidnap them, I'm sorry to say. And you'll probably go to prison. But it might be worth it for the future of humanity, I don't know. The jury's still like a little out, I suppose on whether it's ethical to kidnap people in their sleep and take them to Mars. And if you don't realize that this is a joke by the way I just phrased that last sentence, then we are truly lost. Let me, let me put it this way, if you don't realize that's a joke, get the heck off the Mars list. Sorry. Okay. Well, I'll take... Lump of coal. Our rate of fire was three there. Oh, that's because of milk. Oh, okay, so I, I still feel like we did the right decision to get rid of Kamikaze. However, if we can get IV bag back, we can activate milk, which is a very weird sentence to say, on any given floor, and then we can, uh, or on any given room, I should say, and then we can use that to really up our rate of fire. Is that worth losing Book of Belial? Kind of a tough call, because they accomplish a similar thing. Book of Belial just does it at no cost, but IV Bag does it at, uh, probably to a greater effect if it actually triggers milk, which I don't think I've ever had reason to consider. Um, but with, with a certain red heart cost associated with it, which might make it untenable if our, uh, if our HP falls below one red heart, which is very plausible. For now, though. It looks like it would definitely work. We'll have to consider that. Cross that bridge when we come to it, that's the way to describe that. Anyway, yeah, I definitely like, wait, by my own rules, I definitely do want to live on Mars. Wink, wink, Elon, don't kidnap me. But yeah, I'm not, not my idea of a good time, I think. Again, first off, I'm in no danger of being selected. I have no skills that would be useful in space, and I'm being real with you. I'm always the guy, you know, people sometimes will talk about like, oh, if we were in like a plane crash in the wilderness, like, if we were in Lost, or Lord of the Flies, like, how do you think you'd do? And the answer is, I gotta be real with you, I'm a pretty easy-going dude. So, I think, like, to some extent, to a very, very minor, like, 1 out of 10 extent, I would be useful. Because people would be like, oh, bamboo again, and I'd be like, dude, it's not that bad, just eat it. Like, get over it, you know? Oh, it's hot. Yeah, it's hot, whatever, you know? As long as we're not dying a heat stroke, then what are you complaining about, you know? We got the smoke monster in the jungle. I'm more worried about the smoke monster than the fact that the temperature's creeping up there. But I would definitely be like the second or third person killed. Absolutely. No, I, I, well, I'm not really like a doctor or an engineer. I have no, like, I mean, I do have a degree in biology, but like at the same time... It hasn't really provided me with any useful survival information. It's not like we took a class on like identifying poisonous mushrooms or something like that. Um, so pretty much, I just have to lie and be like I'm a surgeon, and then hope that nobody ever calls me on that knowledge. Or alternatively, rely on just being so good at talking to people, which I don't even think I necessarily am. That if anybody ever requires medical attention, I'll just be like, oh, sorry, they're beyond saving. <laughs> I can't help them. Even my medical degree from Harvard University can't save this person now. But it, it 
doctor. I think it's just... It's just poison ivy. No, it's... Lethal poison ivy. The most... Dangerous of all the poison ivies. Oh well, let's go get some bamboo. I don't know we landed on Bamboo Island, okay? I was just trying to think of like what you eat on an island. Like you've, you've reached a post-scarcity era of island life, but yet you're annoyed with the variety of what you eat. It could probably have. I've seen Gilligan's Island, okay? Okay, have we been to... Yeah, we... No, Rune Bag didn't come from an item room. It came from a golden chest. This all being said, like, I think I would prefer to just check out Boss Rush. Yeah, I mean, we're getting close to time here. Let's see. Not for the episode, but for, like, Boss Rush existing. The sun, sadly not worth much right now. And, the, like, a hundred Yara runes. Okay. Let's... We know what... Yeah, it's not a Curse of the Unknown. That's right. It's a Curse of the... Wait, it's not a Curse of the Blind, I should say. It's a Curse of the Lost? We can't see the map. You get the idea. So we do have enough speed, and, and this fight kind of makes it appropriate. Consider rolling black powder. A situation like that's really useful. Use cube of meat as well. Starting to run out of time. No Krampus, though. Let's come back. Let's go. We got a deal. Grab the Polaroid. This has got to be quick. Ooh, grab the pentagram as well. Ten seconds to go. Ooh. All right, give me dunce cap. I don't think this run is as bad as people let on, to be honest with you. On a big room especially, it's not that bad. I don't think it's good. That's slanderous. But I don't think it's that, that bad. Pretty quickly learning. The juice might not be worth the squeeze on this one. All we need, though, uh, well, I mean, first off, we're going to live, no matter what, I think. Um, and if we can finish it easily, we'll get an item. It's awesome. Potentially. Uh, Algis would be a 10 out of 10 rune to show up. But we could also just take Awas and get the heck out of town, you know? Doesn't work multiple times, unfortunately. Dunce Cap doesn't work very well with Little Brim. That I'll admit readily. Oh my lord. Okay, so immediately after saying we're going to be fine, I'm terrified. It's Dagaz, I think. Even as, like, beyond just living on Mars. I don't even want to be an astronaut. That's like one of those dream jobs that I think is terrifying when you get older. Like, it's incredibly admirable. Canada has a space program. That's, I just wanted to throw that out there. Now, Canada has a space program. I don't know. There's like 12, 15 astronauts, something like that. So whenever one of them retires, they do like a job search. And it's amazing that you get the best candidates in the entire country for this. Like, literally the average candidate that gets to, like, the... Because it's kind of a visible process, or at least it was the last time. It's like, oh, yeah, at first I was in the military as a fighter pilot, and then I got my master's degree in, like, aerospace engineering, and then I, you know, started up a venture capital fund that also somehow was a non-profit, and, it, like, like, literally, and you're like, oh, how old are you? You, you must be 100 with all the things you've accomplished. You're like, I'm 20. <laughs> like, oh, my God. You suck. I hate you. Mostly for making me feel bad, but, like, you're all, obviously you're amazing, but... And then you're like, oh, what's the job? Do you, like, you're a chocolate taster? You know, do you, are you Willy Wonka or something? No, you get strapped in a rocket, and you get to look at how microgravity affects, you know, plant water conductivity. Your experiment runs for, like, eight milliseconds on the way up or something like that. That's amazing, dude. That's how you know these people are selfless and, like, the actual cream of the crop. 
who volunteers for that job? I mean, it, it, sure, it probably pays well and like fulfills a lifelong dream and you're contributing to the advancement of your society. So like all that stuff, I'm not even joking, is like really fulfilling, I imagine at least. But, uh, you know, for me, and maybe this is why, again, one of the many reasons I'd be a bad candidate for an astronaut, I'd be like, did I, I've done so much good and I've, I've put so much time and effort into making my own brain awesome. I can't risk dying in outer space. <laughs> Are you crazy? It's like, I feel like the astronauts should program like the, the experiments to be run and then they should send up like <laughs> death row inmates. <laughs> what a terrible sentiment. Only in situations where the DNA evidence has failed to exonerate them. They, they've also confessed and there's no coercion involved. And then they should just go up in the rocket and press a button. And you know what? If they make it back, which they're probably going to do, like 95% chance, you know? NASA's got it under control these days. If they make it back, takes five years off their sentence. Well, originally, yes, I was going to say they're, like, exonerated or pardoned or whatever, but, like, I mean, once you've done it once, you know, probably you got some skills that would be useful in the future. This is a terrible social opinion. I'm just saying. It seems it's a lot of risk, wouldn't you say? If you're an ass, you spent 38 years in college to become an astronaut. Something goes wrong, a little, like a ring... Of rubber is slightly too thin. It's like a nanometer off, and all of a sudden you're like, well, I guess I'm dying in space. I guess that's a risk you take to when, you, when you try to make great progress, but. There's gotta. There, we, robots in space. That's probably better than sending death row inmates in, on every conceivable axis. Oh, we got an AWAS. Perfect. Right at the end. Anyway, we're gonna take Black Rune. This was certainly not worth it. Alright, not death row inmates. Hear me out now. Willing elderly. Oh, no, I'm just joking. Obviously. Alright, so this run is still good to great. The only lack is in the HP department. And to be fair to the run, we did throw away more HP than we should have doing boss rush to get... Something that might be described as not really an appreciable benefit. The couple of spirit hearts, that's probably going to last us a while. And, you know, we'll throw one of them away trying to leverage it here. It's just one of those jobs like astronaut and politician. I don't understand either of them. They do both carry prestige and power. Absolutely. Fame, if that's the sort of thing you're into. I guess not many astronauts are that famous, but... Oh, dude! Wait a minute. No, I was looking at this and I'm like, do I only have one eye? Like, am I only shooting out one side of my face? Then I realize I'm not Kane. You're eating. Degas? Like, I think I even said this last episode. Or even this episode, but earlier. I think if you want to be a politician, it should preclude you from being a politician because it's, it, it just seems like the kind of job I'm not sure like why, and like no matter what, when you get elected, at least in today's day and age, at least in North America, you get elected, at least 40% of the country is going to hate you or think you're doing a bad job. We probably do want left hand, I guess. Like, no, maybe, let's say 30%. Maybe if you were doing, like, a, a, the best job that has ever been done, 30% of the population would hate you. You could continue, if you're already, like, qualified, you could probably live a job where, like, everybody likes you. you. You could have a good job where people largely think you're, like, a pretty, you know, good person, and they go, hey, what do you think of Justin? You're like, oh, he's a, he's a good kid. You become, uh leader of a country, obviously a lot more weight falls on your shoulders. I don't know. I'm, I'm skeptical of the kind of person that would invite that onto themselves. I guess you genuinely have to be a noble 
person in order to want that in your life. In order to be like, yeah, it's going to cost me a great debt, probably. But, uh... It's what, what needs to be done for the good of our country. That's a scary thought. Because you could... <laughs> You could believe that and also still be a terrible person. You could believe that and be a saint. So I'm not sure if there's that much merit implicitly to that sentence, but anyway. Okay. I'm banking on this 40% chance. Repeating, of course. Dude, that's not bad. If we make it to the chest, we're going to get a lot of items. So we got good stuff going for us right now. Straight up. I love Book of Belial when it works for us to begin with, but... We got to look at this and say, you know what? Satanic Bible's definitely a better call, I think. And we probably should have sucked up Book of Belial. Uh, it's tough, because we're going to get maybe some better opportunities in the future. But, uh, dude, the battery charges, please. You too. You too. Really? Like, okay. You know that it's kind of killing me inside that we're... Somehow we're going to finish this part of this run slower than yesterday's, even though the run is better. My Isaac sense is like all off lately. Like this run's good, actually is trash. This run's trash, actually is average. This run's great, actually you died because you didn't take host hat. You know, I'm in, a, I'm in a world of confusion. I do love our guppy odds. You got to try this here. You don't want to take it because it'll... Like, literally ruin your run, but... I just don't know about it. Like, like, any job that's public-facing. Even, like, YouTuber is kind of public-facing. But I feel like the benefits greatly outweigh the costs most of the time. You know, as long as I don't say anything too stupid. Mostly the worst thing I get tweeted is like, hey, Egg, I don't like you. You made a mistake in Isaac, and I hate you. You know, it's not that bad in the whole scheme of things. And I get to work from home and record this video in my underwear right now. So even better. But anybody, you know, if you're like eight, and you look at the prime minister's job, and you go, yeah, that's what I want to be. More power to you. If you're like 38, you look at it and you go, that's what I want? I'm like, what's wrong? I could just simulate yelling at you. I'm probably being a little bit needlessly reductive to, like, there's, I, certainly there's got to be perks of being the, you know, leader of a country, you know. It's not like you can just exercise your will over people, but a lot of prestige comes through it. I'm sure, you know, you get a lot of adoration as well as getting a lot of hatred, but. Plus, your memoirs are going to sell thousands of copies. I'm still skeptical, though, I gotta admit. I'm, I worry about anybody who, who desires it as a career. City councilor? Comptroller? Sure, I can see it. <laughs> Anything over that level, I don't know, man. I also, like, I'm trying to think, this is a real question, at least for the North Americans amongst you. Can you think of any politician at, like, the, the state level and above in the last, let's say, like, 12 years? Eh, let's, let's say 8 years. Just to make it a little narrower. Has any politician ever retired with people having, like, a positive opinion of them? Overall? the way I seem to see the cycle of politics right now, and this is a little bit um, overly basic, but it's like you get excited about somebody, you elect them once or twice, and then by the time, you know, the, the second or third election rolls around, popular consensus has completely turned against them, and then they get, you know, voted out, more or less. I'm talking, you, you think I'm talking about America right now, I'm not. I'm talking about uh, British Columbia. Where it's happened two times, we had a, two times very recently, we had a Premier Christy Clark voted in for two terms. At the end of her second term, we were like, we hate Christy Clark. Vote her out. Then we had, in Vancouver, we had a mayor, and I, I, 
I was the when the last election happened in Vancouver, I had only lived here. Should have verped that for sure. I had only lived here for two years, so I will admit to you, I did not vote in the 2014 Vancouver mayoral election because I didn't know anything. I was like, I've heard this guy's name a bunch, and he's our existing mayor. Are we? No, we need one more. But I think it would be irresponsible of me to, to vote here because I just don't know anything about the platform. But consensus back then is like, yeah, he's like, he's, he's got Vancouver's best interest in mind. And now it's like, people are like, we hate him. We're going to vote him out. I think that's like the cycle of politics is that, you know, you, you got the public on your side until you don't. And once you don't, you're gone forever. Same thing in Canadian politics at the federal level. Stephen Harper won 100 terms as a Canadian prime minister. And it just this is being equal opportunity. It's on the opposite side of the political spectrum. Must have been at least to some degree respected nationally. And then... Uh, 2015 rolls around, we're like, we hate Stephen Harper. He's gone. You're just, like, you, I feel like you never leave on a positive note as a politician. But I might, is there any politician who's ever been like, or recently at least, who's like, hey, check it out. I just did this awesome thing, and guess what? I'm out. I thought end on a high note. <laughs> I'm done. I thought I'd leave, uh, well, the getting is good. That's how I'd do it if I ever got elected. Plus, it would be an easy exit for me. I'd do like the one thing that everybody wanted from my campaign promises, and then I'd be like, my work here is done. My fellow Canadians. <laughs> from now on, astronauts will be picked from a selected handful of only the most talented death row inmates. I'm out. They would build statues, and there would be legends. I would be like the Ken Dryden of the Prime Minister's office. The Mike Bossy. Yes, these are hockey references. So many people who had short careers of unbelievable quality. I'd, I'd be the D'Angelo. I didn't get rid of the left hand and I'm immediately redeemed. Let's go. That doesn't sound like a job for me. But maybe, dude, it's like too close to the bone. Is that how it goes for YouTubers? And so you, no, I think for YouTube you kind of just like... Definitely you could alienate people. We've seen examples of that happening for sure very famously, but like... Mostly you probably just slowly fade into obscurity because people didn't click the subscriber bell. And as a result, YouTube doesn't notify them of the video going live because their algorithm... Algorithm? <laughs> Their algorithm thinks that it knows people better than they know themselves. So when they click subscribe, YouTube's like, we don't believe you. <laughs> we don't believe you actually want to watch this. You got to click that bell. That's like an are you sure? And are you afraid of the dark? Just give me an emperor card. Like, you know I'm going to do it at this point. Hey, was. Don't make me walk all the way back around here. I mean, come on. This run ended amazingly. This is like a good, mildly above average Isaac run. You know, we finished with Guppy. Good rate of fire. Good damage. Stats, like no, none of the stats really got us down too much except HP for a little while. We did boss rush and none of the other uh, more annoying rooms. This is like a positive, a good time. A good time too. We also got some Zane. This has got a little sample of everything, you know. We got uh, Dunce Cap, probably um, correctly and conventionally thought of as a bad item, and we've made it work. And it wasn't even really hard, to be honest with you, because I mean, it, it, it's not really that bad. Actual dream job. I mean, streamer's pretty good most of the time. Uh, the streamer, YouTuber, you know, anything in that camp. There's bad stuff about it, for sure. Like, you know, you work for, essentially, especially on the YouTube side, you work for a company that never communicates with you. So they'll be like, I'm looking forward to another day at work. Oh, wait, the rules have completely changed. But apart from that, it's pretty good. Other than that, I actually think, like... Like a Hollywood actor, dude. Very few spots, but like, 
you get all the perks and very few of the detractors, I think. I mean, you are famous, but people largely don't care about you as a person. They're just like, I like this actor because they were a really good uh, superhero. That's the dream, man. You mean Marvel will pay me $20 million to pretend to be my childhood favorite superhero and people will love me? And I'm forced to stay in shape? It's a dream come true. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did click the like button, it helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.